going this week. All right, I know we can't just say, Lord, I got these things I got to do. I rebuke this thing in the name. Yeah. I know it can't be heard of my life. And I can do this on this Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, I know it can't be watching out over me. Yeah. There was a shooting not too long ago in the neighborhood. Sometimes I park on the side street when I can't park in front of the house. And I've been parking on the side street. This particular lad was able to park in front of the house. I get a knock on the door. I said, Norman, you need to go see why. There's a shooting when you park the car on the side. Mm. Oh, but God, oh, he cares for me. Right. Not only for me, but whatever is in my, in my friend, whatever belongs to me, he cares for me. Yeah. He said, you be blessed going in and blessed coming out. Yeah. He said, you be blessed in the city, you be blessed in the county. Yeah. He said, whatever belongs to you, he said, you're just going to be blessed as well. Yeah. And I know that he cares for me. Yeah. Deuteronomy 28 says, you shall be blessed. Yeah. 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 Congratulations, Brother Matt. <laughs>
Yes. As we see it, it is we are in a war. For we battle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual darkness and high faith. This means war. Yes. Eternal God, our Father, once again come before your throne of grace. Thank you, God, how you watch that over each and every one of us, Lord God. Father, now I beseech you, come. Holy Spirit, I can't do anything without you. Yeah. I cannot do anything without you doing this power. So I beseech you, come. Speak through these what you will have the people to hear on this. But I take it not for granted to stand behind the sacred desk. Use me up now for your glorification. Oh God, as you do, yes, I speak for what you will have me to say, God. Give you the glory. Yeah. Give you the honor. Yeah. And give you all the praise. Yeah. In Jesus' name, I soon come again. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles with you today, I'll be coming out of two verses of Scripture. The first being Joshua, chapter 10, verses 22 through 25. And the second verse of scripture will be Ephesians chapter 6 uh -huh. verse 15. Joshua 10 verse 22. Then Joshua said, Open the mouth of the king. And bring out those five kings to me from the camp. And they did so and brought out those five kings to him from the camp. The king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lashish, and the king of Ahab. So it was when they brought out those kings to Joshua that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the captain, of the men of war who went with him. Come near. Put your feet on the necks of these kings. And they drew near and put their feet on their necks. Ephesians 6.15 Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And I'll leave you a topic on this morning. Satan, assume your position mm. under my feet. Mm. <laughs> 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 under my feet. The greatest theory, the greatest threat to civil society is mankind. Every day, the flood of images on our television screens tells the sad story. Blood, death, diplomacy, conflict, hatred, mm. fear, poverty, starvation, rape, genocide, refugees and human migration, natural disasters, daily bombing, economic uncertainty, corporate corruption, moral decay, Sexual revolution and a clash of countercultures. Mm. All of these testify that we are all worse than wow. We build buildings and then we bomb them. Mm. We make weapons and then we use them on ourselves. Mm. We make medications that heal and then we hold them from the sick. Mm. We improve the world wide web and then use it to destroy the moral fiber of our children. Mm. We are our greatest enemy. Mm -hmm. We all have made some mistakes, bad decisions. We all at some point realize that we're not where we want to be. Mm -hmm. We look back over the path we have followed and recognize we took some wrong turns and made some selfish choices along the way. We wonder at how foolish we have been and perhaps even think we have failed once and for all. We feel trapped that there is no way we will ever get ourselves out of the jail we have created. Mm -hmm. We feel defeated. We feel alone. Mm -hmm. We feel hopeless. And we might even feel that we can't do anything right. 
You may feel washed up and that there's nothing left in life to look forward to because we've lost our faith grip on God. And that might be true, except for my two favorite words in the Bible. But God. But God. You see, when you think things are one way, yeah. and you're convinced you come to the end of your rope, but God steps in, God. and suddenly everything is all right. Yeah. Ephesians 2, 4 and 8 says, Even when you were dead in the war because of our mistakes yeah. and bad decisions, God made us alive. What Jesus did by conquering the cross, raising us up with him out of whatever mind or circumstance we might have gotten ourselves into, and setting us in Christ at his right hand in the throne of heaven. In other words, no matter what we have gotten ourselves into, God will always give us what we need to get out. Yeah. There have been some people who may have set some traps for you, but God. Yeah. There have been some situations you should have died, but God. No matter what it is, there's always a but God. Yeah. And it erases everything up to that point. Yes, yes. When Joshua led the Israelites across the Jordan River and to the promised land of Canaan, they faced some hordes of hostile people. They had battles to fight the enemies to subdue. When you look at Joshua, there's a book of conquest. A leader behind it all and second into the new. They came out of the wilderness where everything was given to them. Now they're into the promise land where they got to fight for the promises of God. You sometimes we get comfortable and we don't want to fight. We just think everything is going to be the same old way. I want to ask you today, in what areas of your life are you underfunded and always expecting? In Joshua 2, we read about such an encounter. But before we got there, in Joshua 9, he had made a pact with Gideon. And he thought there were some people that were from far away. And he found out they were just around the corner. They weren't far away. But he went into covenant with me. And he had to keep that covenant. You see, covenant is different from what we know of today. Covenant, you only broke by death. Yeah. If you did something wrong, you got killed. But covenant was binding unto death. Mm -hmm. So, he got word, he got a text message. Forgive me. <laughs> hey, yo, Joshua. We got problems. Uh -huh, uh -huh. If our kings around us, they're coming to attack us. Uh -huh. We need you to come on down here. So Joshua, he came on down here. He left Gilgal, which means a place of rest. Uh -huh. It also means a place of a rolling. Uh -huh. That was all you want God to roll up off with you. Uh -huh. All that is like him, all that hatred, all that envy, all that now is backstabbing, backbiting. Uh -huh. You want to come off of you. Uh -huh. So he left the out and he went to help out Gideon. And one of the events that stands out in this book was when Joshua was fighting. And he looked to the Lord. And he commanded, he said, son, stand out still. Yeah. And the son stood still for 24 hours. That's it. But he went on, he, he went on, he was fighting. And those five kings, they went and found themselves a cave in Madaka. Uh -huh. And they went into this cave. Yeah. And all their forces were, were being beaten. The guy went, Joshua said, put some stones up against the mouth of the cave. Put some stones up against the mouth of the cave. Uh -huh. And set a guard there. My, my. So they went on out and they finished killing the enemy. So when Joshua came back, uh -huh. he said, he said, all right, bring them out. Uh -huh. Open up the cave and bring them out. Uh -huh. And they came on out. He said to the cats, now put your foot <laughs> on their legs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you grab someone by the neck, <laughs> you wring them in a moment. Now I'm going to say something about the neck <laughs> and the cervical column. <laughs> cervical column had 31 bones. <laughs> Did that? <laughs> now, from here mm -hmm. to here uh -huh. is eight. Mm -hmm. That's called your cervical column. Mm -hmm. From here, here is your thorax. And then you have your lumbar, your sacral, and your oxygen. Mm -hmm. But see, from here to here, mm -hmm. these eight right here mm -hmm. 
are critical. Whenever you hear C1 or whatever, right. that is critical. critical. Mm -hmm. You hear T1 to T4, you're going to be a paraplegic. Uh -huh. But C1 to C3, you're going to be a quadriplegic. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. C1, C2, and C3. Mm -hmm. Now the C1 is right up underneath the base of the skull. It holds a band. Yeah. Yeah. And it actually happens to you. Well, it's also called the axe. Mm -hmm. The C2 is called the axle. Mm -hmm. Now the C1 is broken. It breaks jacked. Mm -hmm. C2 will break clean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if either one of these three, one, C2, C3 is broken and punctured, <coughs> your central nervous system mm -hmm. is over. You'll be paralyzed from your neck down. You'll be dependent upon ventilators to breathe. Assistance is to require the secretions from your trachea because they don't have a tube right here which will enable you to breathe. C4, you'll retain head motion and neck motion, but you'll still have complete loss of your trunk, control your abdomen back and lower limb functions and your legs. C5, you still have full head movement, but your nervous system will be compromised. Mm -hmm. You can maneuver a wheelchair, but you're still the functions in your arms, your triceps, finger function will be lost along with torso and leg. A C6, elbows, tricep, loss function along with fingers, upper torso, back and abdominal muscles. C7 and C8 is loss of sensation in the hands, fingers, feet, and toes, loss of bladder and bowel control, impaired breathing. So he said, put your feet on the neck. Romans 16 and 20 says, don't be gullible in regard to smooth talking evil. Stay alert. Like this, and before you know it, the God of peace will come down on Satan with both feet, yeah. stomping him into the dirt. Yeah. Enjoy the best of Jesus. Ephesians 6 15 says, Having your feet shod with the perspiration of the gospel of peace. But if you know anything about Roman soldiers, when they went into war, they went in fully dressed. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about shoes, the shoes, there was a the green part. And it came from the foot up to the knee. Yeah. Mm. And it went all around the entire leg. Mm. Because when they were walking through places, they would go through stony and thorny places, which could cut them. Mm -hmm. Or if the enemy they were fighting kicked them in the shin, could break the shin and leave them unable to fight. Mm -hmm. But then they had the shoe, which is made of two leather pieces which they tied together and strapped together. Mm -hmm. But on the bottom mm. of the shoe, mm -hmm. there were spikes, metal mm -hmm. spikes. Anywhere from one to three inches in length. So that when they were fighting, and they were fighting the enemy, they wouldn't lose their balance. They could still stay. Because if your enemy get hold of you, call uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> But while they were standing, that was a fence movement. But then when they got the enemy down, they took those same shoes uh -huh. and stomped my on the enemy.